So, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is to go through building this. And what I decided to do was not to um, build it and show it booting at all because that's kind of what the LFS project's about. It's the learning part of how to do that. To me, this uh, uh, automation is more about developing LFS and tweaking it, trying things out and so on, just making it simpler to um, play around with Linux from scratch, trying new ideas and so on. Although obviously, if you wanted to automatically build a bootable system, it's quite capable of doing that. Um, it's got um, configuration for the config files that LFS needs. Um, and I imagine if you com completely configured it, uh, you, you'd have very little to do apart from maybe um, run something like grub install to install the boot code onto the disk and probably other one and two loose odds and ends to, to get them the system to boot um, and so I've not tried that yet um, it's not been particularly important to me um, another thing I haven't tried yet uh, this tool is apparently capable of building packages from beyond Linux from scratch um, so as I say that's not something I haven't tried yet but I do intend trying that because that sounds quite interesting um, in the past I've always found it quite hard to track what dependencies there are especially as I quite easily get carried away with trying to install as much as I can on BLFS um, especially the documentation side of it that can create lots of circular dependencies and um, just dependencies outright so it'd be interesting to try that and see how how that um, handles uh, dependency resolution um, so what I'm going to do then as I say is just to go through the motions of building the system um, up until, well, ba basically the whole compilation right through to I think about chapter 11 or 12. I'll do a little bit of configuration maybe, which is unnecessary, I guess, when you're just building the um, automation from scratch, uh, sorry, the Linux from scratch, purely from an automation point of view to test things maybe. Um, but yeah, because of that reason, I'm not going to be installing it in MNT of LFS. I'm going to be building in this ALFS directory I've created on my home directory. Um, so I'll be putting everything there to keep everything in place. Also, another reason is if you're rebuilding the project several times, which is quite possible if it's automated, um, as you saw in the title, I've called. You know, I've, I've stated that this can be. You can build a an operating system in un, in under forty seconds. Well, yes, it takes on this machine takes under forty se uh, under forty seconds under forty minutes uh, on this machine. Yes, it does take under forty minutes to compile everything. Obviously, there's extra time setting up the automation, and there'd be extra time configuring and um, booting the system to prove it works. But effectively, the the hard work. Um, yeah, it does take less than 40 minutes or so. Um, so because of that, in theory, every two hours, you could be thrashing out a new uh, version of Linux with some parameters or some tweaks or changes you try out. Uh, you can end up with multiple copies of Linux from scratch. You might not want to delete previous versions to compare um, outputs maybe or log files and so on. So by putting it somewhere other than slash MNT LFS, um, where you know MNT implies mounted uh, file systems should go, which is what happens in the LFS um, book when we're building LFS. Um, yeah, I've decided to put it into an ALFS directory, and a, basically it's just a case of creating a new directory for each iteration of the um, automation that I do, um, and you'll see see that as I go through. So yeah, I've created this ALFS directory. You might have also seen just earlier on, I've created a source archive directory. Um, now that is actually used. It's one of the options on the um, JH ALFS configuration. Uh, it's just a repository basically to store any downloaded packages. And it just means if you do rerun um, JHA LFS, 
that you're not continually downloading the same packages from the internet all the time. JHALFS is intelligent enough to go to this archive directory that you specify uh, to locate the packages first. And if it doesn't find it, then it will go to the internet, download it, store it in this archive pack, uh, folder, and then also copy it to the sources folder as, as we would do normally in LFS. So that's the first thing I'd recommend you do is to create that directory. Um, wherever your work directory is for this ALFS because um, that will certainly not only speed up the process it will save you having to hammer um, the websites that are hosting the packages the source code packages um, so yeah that's for the archive sources one other pre preparation if you like that I do is to create a dummy config file there's an option in the configuration for JHALFS to run the um, Linux kernel uh, compilation, but to do so, it needs a, com a valid config file, and it's got to be a config file that's for that version, really. Because what I did initially when I was testing this was I just copied a config file from an older version of Linux, and I don't know if you know that if um, the version of the config file is older enough or it's from a different uh, minor version it'll attempt to it'll either if it's too old it'll attempt to restart the configuration um, but if it's old uh, sorry new enough but not recent enough if you like it will ask you questions about new um, options that have been added to the kernel since the last minor revision and what happens there the script doesn't know that the um, config or the Linux uh, config uh, preparation is actually sitting at a terminal waiting for you to type in an answer to a question it's asked. Uh, so for example it might have had a new function put in and it will say um, what the function name is yes or no and question mark for information about the function and it will just sit there and this is what happened to me because I use an older version of the config it was just sitting there and the little progress bar was just going along and I thought well it shouldn't be taking this long and when I looked at the log I could see it was waiting for some input from the keyboard so that maybe could be a, a potential bug with the script that maybe there should be an option to offer a yes to the reply an automatic yes or an automatic no or maybe even somehow um, echo uh, the message that's waiting for the input and to accept some input from keyboard that's a possibility for a you know future enhancement or bug fix in some way maybe so yes so what I decided I'd do was to create a dummy config file um, and then at a certain point through the JHA LFS configuration it would have downloaded the Linux archive and then I use that to create an actual genuine config file and then I overwrite the temporary file that I've created here. What I also found was you can't just go ahead and touch the config file because the script is intelligent enough to see that the um, file, because it's a brand new file, is empty, zero bytes, so that doesn't work either. So what I did in the end was, because it has to be populated with something, I just thought, oh, hang on a minute, let me set my keyboard up. Um, right, for some reason, this uh, user doesn't have the keyboard retained, and I don't know why, if that's a bug with KDE. So I have to, I haven't looked into it yet, and I have to edit it and change it every single time all right let's see if that's better yep okay so what i do is just echo a, a string to the file that i'm going to create so i'll just put to be uh, populated and i just send that string to the file name which i'm going to call config-6.1.11 which is the version of linux that's used in the most recent stable release of Linux from scratch, which is 
So now if you look in this directory, I've got the source archive, which has actually got the packages that I've used, that I've downloaded when I've been testing this, as you can see there. Um, so that, that means that when it goes through, in fact, what I'll do is I'll delete one. Let's delete a relatively small one, that one, for example. And you'll see it will fetch that one alone, but all the others it will retain. Um, and I've also got that config file, which I've just created. And you can see it's got that string in there. So if I did come back to that and saw it says to be populated, then I know that it's not really a valid config file. Um, and uh, I need to actually overwrite it. So what I need to do now is to fetch the uh, project. So hopefully, my, no, I overwrote that. So I'll have to switch back to the browser, get this command again, and paste it. Okay, paste it in. And that will fetch the project into a JHALFS directory. So now if I change into that, you can see there's all the files that have been downloaded um, for the project.